So I was thinking, you know, once again, your transition from uh, leaving the Army right, uh, and going off to college, uh, what that kind of looked back, because uh, you and I are kind of kindred because I, I went in when they uh, the draft went away right. and uh, went the volunteer route. Right. And going in there, and we still had once again that GI Bill we had even back then was sure. was fairly decent, pretty good. It was pretty decent. But what that looked like for you, I mean, this is what happened. Uh, both of us are Cold War uh, mm-hmm. veterans, and one great advantage that we had when we reentered was we didn't have a load of combat trauma uh, or stress uh, imposed on us. We maybe had some readjustment issues, and uh, we also were looking forward to being civilians again so we could uh, grow our whiskers and go find some girls and have some fun. Right. Um, Anything that is complicated uh, by combat uh, trauma, uh, we know that veterans have about half experienced some form uh, and half do not, and there are lots of different explanations for that, but... I didn't have PTS to put up with. My son certainly did, and many of his brethren. uh, And actually, what happened uh, during the post-9-11 wars was the thing that helped uh, shift my career from uh, an active 30-plus years in uh, journalism. Mm -hmm. Good deal of it was military journalism. I got to go to Iraq uh, as an embed, and uh, that ended up being uh, a different kind of education. Uh, I can tell you I wasn't a combatant. I was a non-combatant in a combat zone. Correct, yeah. And uh, that's different. It is. Because uh, you either are not uh, inflicting violence, you're not experiencing violence unless something uh, terrible happens, and uh, I was fortunate. We come back. uh, I want to ask you a little bit, because the fact that we are Cold War warriors, uh, we did not serve in combat. Uh, even though we, we realized that the enemy we were facing, uh, we were talking about thousands of miles sure. instead of staring down the, the barrel of a gun at somebody. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a very dangerous world yes. that we were in, and uh, it doesn't take away from those that we were in harm's way in a sense, but we didn't feel with the, deal with the drama and the, and the stress of something like that. Like uh, my brother was a missile silo guy that every day that he went down into the silo and he saw those doors close as he was going underground, my, my friend who was a Vietnam combat uh, draftee uh, is very uh, very respectful or very kind uh, uh, in his appraisal. He says, you guys had a lot of stress. Uh, and also um, Dick Rutan, yep. uh, who flew so many wild weasel uh, missions in Vietnam, uh, also said that real tension was... Uh, uh, Putting a nuclear weapon in an aircraft and then, uh, then taking off with it. Yeah. So that was part of your experience. Uh, my experience on the East German border was whether it was uh, uh, Stasi or uh, Deutsches Demokratische Republik, uh, the GDR uh, troops, uh, or the occasional Soviet military liaison. Uh, we looked at each other at about the same distance you and I are sitting. Right. And. Uh, uh, you know, it's not the old west, and chances were you were going to be able to go home at night, but it had stresses of its own. Oh, I did. And, uh, you know, we, we managed to take... Nothing them. like getting shot to hell. Exactly. And, uh, of course, you know, Dick Rutan told me also, he goes, you know, people were dying during the Cold War. They did. They did. We, we did. lost air crew. Yes. Uh, we lost a couple of submarines. Yep. Um, I lost some uh, some friends, actually, in the Federal Republic of Germany. Parachute accidents and... Sure. Uh, um, and violent death. Sure. So when we come back here, uh, I want to talk to you about the Vietnam vets that we served with. Yes. That we ended up in the same units with that yes. we could see the problems with. So sure. we'll carry on with that right after this.